So what about me and what about leadership? Uh, there we go. This is an, uh, an endless story, a lifetime story. Uh, but really it's, it's um, very simple. In a nutshell, uh, leadership is not something that comes from the uh, academic environment. Leadership is something that uh, I think comes inside out. It's, it's, not, it's not a program or uh, a, a teaching or whatever. It is something that you are apparently born with. And uh, I happen to be lucky to have some of those elements uh, inside of me. I always compare it to what happened in the old times. Uh, if you compare it to situations in religion, then you see that there are remarkable uh, um, uh, resemblances uh, among leadership that you have nowadays in sustainability and what you had in the old days in religion. Let's take uh, as an example, let's take uh, the famous Moses who went out of Egypt. Uh, he had a vision of what could be. Uh, so I'm, I'm not a very religious guy, but I love the story. He went out and uh, he had a vision of what could be uh, a better land than where they came, uh, where they came from. Uh, he started to assemble a group of people uh, that shared the same vision and shared the same dream about what could be. And they started walking and they left everything behind. And those two, two ingredients are, I think, the basis of... Uh, the basis of what uh, what leadership is all about. So those two elements are uh, really what it's all about. It is a vision of where you want to go with a group of people that leave everything behind. Um, in leaving everything behind is the crux of, uh, of innovation because the, the older you get, and uh, the more there is to lose. The bigger an organization is and the more structure there is in an organization, the more there is to ruin and the more there is to lose and the more risk you apparently take in moving out. If you don't have anything, there's no risk at all because you don't have it, so there's nothing to lose. And you can only worry about your dreams. Those elements of having a dream of where you want to go to and having nothing to lose, those two elements are the key of innovation and I think they are the key of leadership. You continuously have to push a mentality in groups, in organizations, to keep dreaming about what could be, what could be better, and not to worry too much about what there is to lose, but what there is to win. So about the destiny more than about the legacy. You see a lot of organizations that work with uh, a shitload of, uh, of legacy around their necks, uh, buried in F&A systems, buried in uh, organizational structures, buried in processes and they cannot escape from it anymore. It's like an open door, everybody knows. But the minute you stand up in the morning and you say, well, let's leave it behind and let's go another way, that is the core of uh, what innovation is all about. A lot of people need this uh, break up uh, with uh, the history. They need that um, uh, as a sort of accident. So sometimes you, you lose a, a, a beloved one, sometimes you get fired, um, those sorts of uh, traumatic uh, uh, circumstances bring people to what else do I have to lose and for a lot of people uh, the feeling of there is nothing to lose I can start new comes only at that moment if you want to do that in a sustained way you have to get into an organization into individuals you have to get a mentality in that every day is a new opportunity. It, it sounds almost trivial, but I've noticed uh, um, in, in my career that it happens over and over again that you get trapped in legacy. Every day is a new opportunity if you make the right balance to what there is to lose and what there is to gain. Um, uh, if you can, uh, like in, in our organization, if you can uh, foster uh, a mentality and an environment where people keep dreaming about what could be, uh, thinking about scenarios, thinking about um, uh, more exciting uh, ways of, of uh, developing business, of working with people, and to start walking, leaving the stuff behind that they already have, then you see that automatically a lot of people will follow. Of course there's a risk in this, and every big organization will say, uh, yeah, if, if I let everybody go just like that, then it, uh, everything becomes a chaos because uh, this organization will be torn apart. Well, uh, the, the truth is it's only a very small amount of people that have the ability 
to continuously on a day-to-day basis, uh, basis without any trauma to start anew uh, uh, on, on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis simply to leave behind in their thinking leave behind the legacy and start anew this is what we uh, bury in this organization uh, thinking about the future and go a route and not waggle through the desert but uh, like Moses have a very clear destiny and start walking into a certain direction taking all the misery along the way taking that uh, uh, as a consequence of your choice to leave the previous world behind and to go to the new uh, world this is what we have in in, uh, Appion uh, as well we deliberately have a small group in the organization with what you would normally call uh, a bunch of fools uh, like the, like the old castle uh, king uh, who has uh, this little joker around that can say anything he likes uh, and he is a sort of mirror to uh, to the king to see if there is still an opening necessary in, in this big structural approach now we have an uh, insight, we have a department that we call Grease Lightning uh, it is um, what we call the grease of the organization they are allowed to talk about everything to interfere with everything, uh, to ask questions about everything, and come with initiatives about everything. Uh, They do parties, um, they do inventions, uh, patents are born there, so it's not the old-fashioned research organization that is the starting point of a whole process of product development and introduction, etc. It is an integral sort of um, um, uh, DNA in the organization, that is continuously renewing a part of the organization wherever they go and they are allowed to do so they don't have a budget because that that would be killing as of the start they don't have a budget to do this Um, they they don't have a structure to do it it is a bunch of people that have the explicit freedom not the assignment but the explicit freedom to do whatever they think is sensible fun necessary, useful, etc. The selection of those people, including myself, I consider myself part of that uh, department, although strictly organizationally uh, I'm not allowed to say so, but I I work as if I'm uh, in that department reporting to myself. That is, I think, the core of what makes Epion a different organization. For the rest, we have the same shit as every organization has. We have an HR department that is in fight with everybody, R&D fights with operations, and that's, that's usual. Every structure comes with uh, organizational friction. Every growing organization, every growing organism comes with uh, growth pains. That's, that's perfectly normal. What the core is, is the decision of direction has to be taken in an independent way. And there you have to get rid of the feeling of, I lose my legacy. Legacy is only there to hold you back and it stifles innovation. Um. Sustainability, what is this all about? We talked about leadership. So what is sustainability all about? Um, Sustainability is uh, the continuation of the development of people. Um, Sustainability is not to build a car that can uh, last forever. It's not a vacuum cleaner that can last forever. It's not a software program that can last forever. It's not a structure that can last forever. Sustainability is a continued development, the freedom for a continued development of people. Uh, and that comes in many, many aspects. A freedom to develop itself comes with uh, all sorts of forms of uh, democracy. So there's a political requirement around uh, continuation of development of people. There is an organizational part of it, if you talk about businesses, there's an organizational part to it. There is uh, a generational part of it. Uh, I have to pass on Uh, a responsibility of a continuation of development of people to my children. So everything that I do has to be in such a way that it contributes to the development of people, not of organizations. If you have to change the organization for sake of the development of people, you have to do so. If you have to change a process for sake of development of people, you have to do so. If you have to change politics, you have to do so. So it's a route that we go together for a continuation of development of people. Um, There's a lot of sensibility built into this. Um, I've worked a little bit with uh, Philips, so I know about uh, sense and simplicity and that sort of stuff. I think the core of that message is absolutely true. The implementation is like 
the Catholic Church talking about marriage. Um, so they, they know theoretically what they talk about, but the implementation is way off from the core of what it's all about. It's in, about the individuals, it's not about the organization. So sustainability is all about that, continuation of development of people.